is a video of the navigated oblique lumbar interbody fusion. This is the patient history. The patient presents with the chief complaint of back pain with progressive lower extremity numbness for two years. These are the radiographic images. On the left, you can see the CT scan demonstrating the lateral asthesis at L3-4. On the right is the MRI images demonstrating the axial cuts through L2-3, L3-4, and L4-5. Here you can see the long-standing x-rays demonstrating the patient's deformity, and on the right are shown the spinal pelvic parameters. An oblique lumbar interbody fusion is planned for three reasons. First, to help correct the coronal deformity. Second, to enhance arthrodesis. And third, to address the lateral asthesis that is seen at L3-4. The patient is positioned in the right lateral decubitus position. Using navigation, the midpoint of the vertebral bodies is identified. A ruler is used to measure five centimeters anterior to the midpoint. This is how the incision is planned. After opening the skin and the fascia, the muscles are dissected bluntly. The three muscular layers of the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis are bluntly dissected until retroperitoneal fat is reached. Once the retroperitoneal fat has been reached, manual dissection is then used to create a pocket in the abdominal cavity for the surgery. Lighted retractors are then used to dissect to the psoas muscle anterior to the spine. Navigation confirms position, and after confirming positioning, the dilators are placed in order to place the retractor. Here you can see how the table-mounted retractor is positioned and placed with an oblique angulation towards the posterior aspect of the spine. The width of the minimally invasive tubular retractor is 22 millimeters, and this can be expanded as necessary. This is the visualization that is achieved after the retractor has been placed and the light sources are also placed. After that has been performed, the disc is incised and using rongeurs, disc material is subsequently removed. This can be done with rongeurs and a combination of curettes to loosen the disc and to remove as much disc as possible. This is the visualization that is seen through the retractor. Curettes are then used to loosen the disc material and afterwards pituitary rongeurs are used to remove the fragments. After this has been performed, a navigated cob is then inserted in an oblique manner. After partially going into the disc space, the cob is then rotated out of the retractor into a true lateral position. Thus, even though the surgery is performed with an oblique approach, the interbody fusion and other instrumented working tools are placed in a true lateral fashion. Here you can see a ring curette going down and loosening further disc material and preparing the end plates. This is a navigated end plate shaver to prepare the end plates and remove all of the cartilaginous end plates. You can see here that the instruments are placed through the retractor in an oblique manner, but then subsequently rotated outwards to a true lateral position. This is a trial being placed in a true lateral position despite the oblique approach. This is the implant itself that has been filled with graft material for arthrodesis. Metallic slides are used in order to protect the end plates as the implant is going in. This not only protects the end plates from violation, but it also contains the graft material. A postoperative CT and X-ray demonstrate the construct. 